who is the scapegoat? Is the scapegoat talking about a sin bearer for us, a type of Jesus, or is it a type of Satan? In Leviticus chapter 16, verses 5 to 10 and verses 20 to 22, the Bible talks about a goat that makes atonement for all the sins of the children of Israel by bearing their iniquities and taking all of their iniquities away. And most Bible commentators believe that this is a picture of Christ who takes away the sins of the world. But the Seventh-day Adventists believe that this is a picture of Satan. And they believe that one day, Satan will make atonement for the sins of God's people, will bear their iniquities and take their iniquities away. They even believe that Satan will be punished for their sins. And some go so far as to say that Satan will be the one to finally separate God's people from their sins. I want to begin by reading to you from Ellen White. Ellen White is their uh, false prophet and they believe her writings are inspired and without error. And this is from the Great Controversy, chapter 28, one of the paragraphs there. I'm going to read to you from what Ellen White says and then afterwards I want to play you a clip where Doug Batchelor says the same thing but really even worse. So let me begin by reading here what Ellen White says. She says this, as the priest, in removing the sins from the sanctuary, confess them on the head of the scapegoat, so Christ will place all these sins upon Satan, the originator and instigator of sin. The scapegoat bearing the sins of Israel was sent away unto a land not inhabited. So Satan, bearing the guilt of all the sins which he has caused God's people to commit, will be for a thousand years confined to the earth, which will then be desolate without inhabitant, and he will at last suffer the full penalty of the sins in the fires that shall destroy all the wicked. Thus the great plan of redemption will reach its accomplishment in the final eradication of sin and the deliverance of all who have been willing to renounce evil. What Ellen White is saying here is completely unbiblical. She's saying that one day Jesus is going to place all of God's people's sins upon Satan. Satan's going to bear the iniquity of all of God's people. He's going to bear all of the guilt for that sin, and he's going to bear the full penalty for the sins of God's people. Now, it's important to stress here that Ellen White is not saying that, you know, he's going to be punished for his own sin. He's going to bear the penalty for his own sin. Ellen White is saying that he's going to bear the penalty and the guilt for all of our sins. Now, this is something that Jesus has already done for us. Jesus has already taken our sins upon himself. It says he bore our sins in his body on the cross, past tense. Even in the Greek, in the, when you read that passage in Peter, it's past tense. Jesus once for all bore our sins in his body on the cross, right? Satan is not the one that pays the penalty for our sin. Jesus is the one that pays the penalty for our sins. It's important that we understand this. Ellen White is teaching false doctrine. But notice as well that she says this is the great plan of redemption. This is God's great plan of redemption that Satan would bear our sins and, and pay the full penalty for our sins. This is not biblical. This is contrary to what the Word of God teaches. And notice as well that it is this that brings about the deliverance of all of God's people who are willing to renounce evil. This is completely unbiblical. But let me play you this clip from Doug Batchelor. That Aziel, that scapegoat, is the one upon whom the sins of the people are ultimately transferred. It's not slain like a sacrifice. The Lord's goat, Jesus, died. It is carried off into a wilderness, desolate places. You know, the Bible says when the Lord casts a demon out, the demon goes in desolate places. And the devil said in Mark chapter 5, do not cast us out into the nothingness. And so this goat was taken out, you know, one, it's not in the Bible, but uh, one legend is that this capable person who would take the goat out would find a high precipice and kick him off to make sure he didn't come back. Because if that goat followed them back into the camp, that was the worst omen possible, that somehow their sins had returned. And so um, this was to represent completely and forever separating God's people from their sins. Now, is Jesus forever going to bear our sins? Then that goat that forever bears the sins, that bears responsibility, that never comes back, cannot really be a type of Christ. You know, Jesus suffered, yes, for all of our sins. But there's a responsibility for sin. Those who do not repent bear that responsibility. Does the devil ever repent? So does he bear responsibility? 
Yeah, and so I just wanted to make it clear who the scapegoat is. It is not Jesus. The, sca the Lord's goat represents Jesus. The scapegoat represents who? Satan or the devil. Notice what he just said there. He said Satan is the one that finally separates God's people from their sins. That's not biblical. The Bible very clearly teaches us that Jesus is the one that separates us from our sins. We'll look at that a bit later in the book of Hebrews. But notice also that he says that you know, Jesus won't bear our sins forever, as if Jesus is currently bearing our sins in heaven. That's not biblical either. The Bible says he bore our sins, past tense, in his body on the cross. And then he died for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. He's not bearing our sins in heaven right now. He bore our sins, past tense, in his body on the cross, and he died for our sins. He took the penalty that we deserve. He's not going to put the penalty for our sins on Satan later on. That's completely unbiblical. Satan will be punished for his own wickedness, not for our wickedness. Now, what about here in Leviticus chapter 16? Is this really talking about Satan? Well, I want to go through this passage with you and I want to show you that this is talking about Jesus, not Satan. Let's begin reading verse 5. We're going to read verses 5 to 10 and 20 to 22, but we're going to go through it bit by bit instead of reading it all out at once. Let's begin in verse 5. It says this, And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things here. First of all, I want you to notice that both of these goats come from among the children of Israel. It's not as though one goat came from among the children of Israel and another goat came from the wilderness. Both of these goats come from among the children of Israel. And I think that points to the fact that Jesus Christ came from among the children of Israel. But Satan cannot be described as somebody that comes from among the children of Israel. That's the first point. I think that's a, a point in favor of these two goats representing two aspects of Christ's ministry. The second thing that's worth noting is that both of these goats are described as a sin offering. Both of the goats are described as a singular sin offering offering. And I think they represent two aspects of Christ's ministry. And also it's important to note that in order for something to qualify as a sin offering, it must be without blemish. When you look at Leviticus chapter 4, you'll see that a number of animals could be offered as a sin offering, including a goat. But in every single case, the animal had to be without blemish. And of course, this points to the sinlessness of Christ. But Satan himself cannot be described as being without blemish, without sin, right? He is the father of lies. He was a murderer from the beginning. So I don't think that either of these goats can represent Satan. They both represent two aspects of Christ's ministry. Let's keep reading. We're up to verse 6 here. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as a scapegoat into the wilderness. Now, Seventh-day Adventists love to point out that only one of these goats is actually offered as a sin offering. The other is let loose into the wilderness for Azazel. And so they say, look, only one of these goats uh, is a sin offering, and therefore that one represents Christ. But the other one, that represents Satan. Couple of problems with that again. First of all, notice it says lots are cast for the two goats, one for the Lord and one for Azazel, one for a sin offering, one as a scapegoat, which means that both of these goats had to qualify to be a sin offering. Both of them had to qualify to be a sin offering. And in order to qualify to be a sin offering, they had to both be without blemish. So again, this cannot be a description of of Satan. Now, what about this you know, word Azazel, the word scapegoat, translated as scapegoat? Is that Satan? Let me read to you from a book called The Hard Sayings of the Bible. In later Jewish theology, the apocryphal book of Enoch uses Azazel as the name for one of the fallen angels, but there is no evidence for the existence of a demon by that name in Moses' day. Enoch's elaborate demonology is admittedly late, 200 BC, and often uses late Aramaic forms for those names it is clear that they are all of post-biblical invention. The most adequate explanation is to view the term Azazel as being composed of two words. The first part, ez, meaning goat, and the second part, azel, meaning to go away. 
With recent evidence from the Ugaritic, the language of ancient Canaan from which Hebrew is derived, compound names such as this one are turning up more frequently than what we had expected based on evidence from the Hebrew Bible alone. This is how the rendering scapegoat came to be. The Jewish commentator Rashi gives another explanation and says that Azazel is a strong and hard mountain with a high cliff. And I think that makes a lot of sense considering that Jewish tradition tells us that the scapegoat was pushed off of a cliff to die. Now I want to read to you one more quote from the Unger's Bible Dictionary. It says this, The most probable rendering of Azazel is complete sending away, i.e. solitude. The rendering then of this passage would be, the one for Jehovah and the other for utter removal. The other thing that's worth noting is that verse 10 tells us that this goat makes atonement for the sins of the children of Israel. Now, Seventh-day Adventists will be quick to point out that there's a story in the Old Testament where a wicked man is put to death. I think a spear is shoved through him and it says, thus he made atonement for the sins of the children of Israel. The difference is that in this passage, this goat is without blemish. This goat is being substituted for the sinner. This goat is not you know, a guilty party to anything. This goat is an innocent animal that is being uh, substituted for a wicked person. And so I don't think, again, that the atonement being described here is that kind of atonement that the Seventh-day Adventists would point to where the wicked man was put to death by being speared and therefore brought atonement to the children of Israel in that moment. The other thing that's worth noting here is that when you look at verses 20 to 22, it's very clear that this goat bears all of the transgressions, all of the iniquities, and all of the sins of God's people. This animal is not being um, driven into the wilderness and, and bearing its own sins, its own, tra its own transgressions. It's bearing the sins of somebody else. Now let's uh, read verses 20 to 22. It says this, And when he had made an end of the atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting, and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, Aaron shall lay both hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat, and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land, and he shall release the goat into the wilderness. And I think that this is a representation of the fact that Jesus Christ bore all of our sins, bore all of the guilt, bore the full punishment for our sins, and bore our sins unto death. He died bearing our sins. The desolate place is death. That's what I think is being described here. And I think that's very clear that this is a representation of Jesus Christ, not of Satan. Satan doesn't bear our sins. Satan isn't punished for our sins. Nothing like that. Jesus Christ is the one that does all those things. Now I want to look at 1 Peter chapter 2 because I think this is important. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says this, who himself referring to Christ bore our sins in his body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. This verse could not be clearer. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross and he died bearing the guilt and punishment for our sins. I think that's very clear. Another one is Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, and it says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Notice here that it says that the Son has purged our sins and then sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Have a look at Hebrews chapter 9. Beginning at verse 24, it says this, For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Christ has purged our sin and put our sin away. Have a look at Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse 4. It says this, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. 
Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Then go to verse 11. And every high priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnessed to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. You see, the Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ is the scapegoat, not Satan. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross. He purged us of our sins. He put our sins away and he took away our sins. Satan is not the one that will finally separate us from our sins. It is Jesus Christ. Well, I hope you like this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comments section and you'll see me in my next video.